Bridge on the River Kwai was a 1957 prison war camp drama starring Alec Guinness and William Holden, directed by David Lean. Um, it's another prison camp movie involving William Holden, and there's basically two stories going on here. You know, there's actually not much interaction with William Holden and Alec Guinness. So the f one story is basically William Holden and his escape from the camp and subsequent return, and also that of the story of Alec Guinness, who plays this proud British commander who initially has some disagreements with the camp commander, but eventually leads the British troops in the construction of a bridge. So the story takes place in 1943, and it opens with the British soldiers arriving at this Japanese prison camp in Burma. Uh, Alec Guinness is the commander, and he initially meets with this camp commander, Commander Sato. Now, the thing is that the Sato wants the officers to do manual labor along with the soldiers, but Alec Guinness says no go, that the Geneva Convention forbids this. So there's this initial stubborn resistance, and the colonel tells his officers as well to resist doing any work. So it's just the British soldiers who go off, and they do all the work of building this bridge, and the officers just stand there in the Burmese heat all day long. It's an uncomfortable scene. Uh, later, uh, this commander Saito, he has the officers put into this punishment area of the camp and Alec Guinness gets put into a metal box which is a sequence that's just nasty and claustrophobic to think about I mean he's literally put into this small metal box in the sun and left there all day long and how Alec Guinness didn't fry to death in that metal box is a mystery he should have roasted like a honey-baked ham in that thing so it definitely looks awful when the sequence is over and when he gets out and meets with the medical officer. Um, the medical officer was played by James Donald. Uh, he was in the Great Escape movie as well. That's about the only other thing I could recognize him from. And the rest of the cast from this film I wasn't too familiar with. So Alec Guinness, he gets out of the box, he makes his recovery. And it's interesting to me to see Alec Guinness in any non-Obi-Wan Kenobi role. Yes, I'm an uncultured swine who should know that he's been in plenty of pre-Ben Kenobi roles. But since that's the biggest thing I really know him from, I can't help it. And I have to admit, it does become a little distracting, though, in that, you know, when you see him in this prison camp, facing off with the enemy commander, you can't help but wonder, what if he just used force suggestion to get out, you know? These aren't the soldiers you're looking for, you know, waves his hand. Or better yet, use the force pull power to bring down the bridge over the River Kwai. But right, I'm getting off topic. So let's get into the second plot thread. So William Holden, he's been at the camp for a long time. He's got really dark suntan. He's been a prisoner there for a long while. And he and some of his friends attempt an escape. In the process, two of them get shot. And Holden, who's just sort of staggering through the Burmese jungle on his own, is, you know, he's nearly dead, he's exhausted. He finally manages to make it to a village where he's nursed back to health. And then he continues from that village and eventually finds his way to a British colony where he makes a full recovery. The story goes back to the prison camp. The officers are still defiant and the British soldiers, for the most part, are just goofing off. They're not really building the bridge. They're just sort of doing a half effort they're sabotaging the bridge and swimming in the river and having a good time because there's no actual leadership for many of the officers. And basically, this Japanese commander, he's had enough. And knowing he's going to have to commit a ritual suicide if he fails to get this bridge built, he finds a fishy way to compromise and agrees that the officers don't actually need to do any manual labor. And this is the part of the film where Alec Guinness, as the colonel, seems to recover his wits and steps forward, really steps up to the plate and makes a genuine effort in building the bridge. And he legitimately wants to see it done right. I'm not completely sure why, but the film establishes that he does this because he wants to show British pride in doing the job right or something like that. And eventually they get to work and the with his leadership, 
and some of the Japanese soldiers helping as well. They eventually get a decent functional bridge put together. So there's this bridge over the river, and then we jump back to the William Holden narrative. So he's at this British hospital, he's recovered, he's chasing a woman, and he's drinking, and so on. The soldiers there, the commanders at this British post, eventually realize they're going to put him to work. He's been at this prison camp, so they send him back with some other soldiers, and the mission is to sneak back to the camp and blow up the bridge. So he and some of the troops, they airdrop him in, they trek through the woods with some of the locals, and eventually they get back to the prison camp, and they're on the outskirts of it, and they see the fully constructed bridge. They've got some explosives with them, and, well, I'll let you check it out to see how it all resolves. It is really a clever film, and it really makes you feel uncomfortable in that tropical jungle heat, particularly when Alec Guinness gets thrown into that metal box for hours at a time. It did seem to drag just a little bit around the parts with the British Hospital and William Holden. I felt like maybe they could have abridged that a little bit, but, you know, it's it's still pretty good. The ending of the film is a really satisfying one. You know, and you're left wondering, maybe Alec Guinness took things a little too far with building the bridge? Who knows? Check it out and see for yourself. Maybe you'll watch it and you too will think, Madness! Madness!